Okay, it's been so crazy the last 12 months here in real estate, right? If you're out there right now and you're considering buying a first home, you've been a first time home buyer, there is a lot of things going on right now from bidding wars. I mean, the last 12 months have been crazy. We had some record low interest rates and then we've seen their interest rates climb. And my God, it's even exhausting for us real estate agents. So we're gonna talk about five housing trends that are impacting first time home buyers right now today. My name is Andrew Finney, your real estate geek. If you need help finding a top agent where you live or if you simply wanna drop me a line to say hello, my contact info is below. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel now and like this video. I upload six days a week, so if you want to get notified of the next one, tap that little bio icon and let's get going. Okay, team, let's take a closer look at this. Why are the last 12 months so insane? Now, some of this stuff is going to be quite obvious to you from your family, your friends, or whomever that you might know that's out there looking at purchasing a home, whether a first time home buyer, second time home buyer, what have you, home buyer, right? Now, what's really getting the first time home buyers is the first point here. Starter homes are getting increasingly scarce. Where are you supposed to go as a first time home buyer as you're building up your credit, as you're building up your life, as you're building up your financials to be able to purchase a second or third home that might become a forever home, right? Starter homes are getting scarce. Unfortunately, the we're seeing the average median home price rise across the nation. I know here in Las Vegas, Nevada, over the last, just the last eight months alone, we've seen appreciation of 15%. Now, whenever some people look at that, oh, that's a good thing. No, 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 dispel that myth and let's go ahead and dispel it right now. That is insanely high, 15%. And that's causes some people that are on the fence about buying a home or renting the thing. Oh, we're headed for a collapse. We're headed for another 2008. And no, 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 we're not headed there either. What we're headed to is a balance. What we're headed to is a stabilization. And you're likely to going to start taking notice of that going forward for the remainder of 2018. And going into 2019, you'll start seeing a little bit more stability in the market. Now, what does stability in the market mean to you as a first time home buyer? Well, stability in the market means that homes are still going to appreciate. But as opposed to maybe like Las Vegas, and let's use it because that's my marketplace, right? Like Las Vegas, a real estate appreciate getting 15% since the beginning of 2018 to right now, which is August, right? So since that time, we might see next year going into 2019 and we could be having this conversation a year from now next August and maybe we'll be talking about for the 6% appreciation as opposed to the 15. It's going to be a slower rate of appreciation, which is going to definitely help. Now, but with mortgage interest rates rising, that gets a little bit more difficult and it makes those starter homes getting more scarce, a little bit more harder to buy as it wasn't already. Now, you got to think about this because sometimes what happens in the market is buyers are like, hey, you know what? Let me not compete with what's going on in the resale market. Let me just go ahead and buy new. Well, the average sales price of a resale home here in Las Vegas, Nevada, across the entire valley is $280,000 as of the making of this video, right? Average new home construction, $300,000. $35,000. Something to think about, something to consider because that's a trend that's all around the nation. The reason that I bring this up with starter homes getting scarce for you as a first time home buyer is you gotta be a little bit more practical about what you consider a starter home. You may be starting out in a community that you're not the biggest fan of. You may be starting out in a smaller home that you would really like to see yourself living in. At the same time, biting that bullet, getting into that first home, getting into your first home is going to benefit you massively. And you might be saying, well, Andrew, well, why should I live in something I don't like? Well, I've had this conversation with several different people recently and here's why. Let me just break this down for you and the logic of this. So put your thinking cap on and let's buckle down on this one together, okay? It's simple. When you buy your first home, what are you doing? You're giving yourself a known variable as far as your monthly mortgage is concerned. The only time that monthly mortgage is likely to change is every single year when the county reassesses the taxes, but we're not talking about a huge amount of money that's gonna increase your mortgage hundreds of dollars. It might increase it by 10 or $20. It depends on where you live in the country and what the county does with your reassessment. That's not us real estate agents. That's not the mortgage lenders. That's no one doing that, but the county. That's the government doing that. So it's one of those things to plan for as a homeowner. That being said, a lot of people in this market, as you've noticed, rents are climbing. As homes get harder for you to buy because starter homes are more scarce, what do landlords know? people need a roof over their head, right? So they know that they can increase the monthly rent and that people are gonna be paying it. So, you know, I had a conversation with a nice family and they're like, Andrew, we're paying $2,000 a month in rent. I was like, oh my God, $2,000 a month of rent, you could be buying a $300,000, $325,000 home depending on your debt to income ratios. And they're like, well, that's what we would like to do, but we haven't seen any homes that we like. I think we're just gonna continue the rent. Well, why would you do that? Oh, because I really love my rental. And how long have you been renting? I asked them and they say, oh, we've been renting for 20 years. So I said, okay, let's take the math there and let's take a look at it. 1,000 times 12 is what? 12,000. 12,000 times 10 is what? 120,000. Now we want to take that and double it because you had said 20 years, right? So for easy math purposes, why well, did it that way, right? And some people love math, some people not so much. So anyways, $240,000 you have flushed down the toilet. If you'd bought a home 20 years ago, do you think you would have that house paid off? 
Well, yeah, probably that's a lot of money. Yes, and you're never gonna see it again. If you get yourself into your first home, even if it's not everything that you've always wanted in your new home, you would be paying down your mortgage balance and at the same time starting to enjoy the home appreciation which is going to do what for you now you have peace of mind you have stability your credit score is likely to climb as you make more consistent payments you're going to feel more stable in your life things are going to improve for you dramatically on the financial side of the house no longer do you got to worry about landlords increasing rent five percent to ten percent every year or when your contract expires and if you want to stay you got to pay more to stay in the same place right now what you're going to be able to do is pay down your mortgage balance and enjoy the home appreciation. So come five to seven years into the future, you can sell that property and move on to the home that you really want using the equity from your first home that maybe you didn't care for it so much for to purchase the home you really do care so much for. Something to think about, something to consider. Now, the second thing to take notice of is the lifestyle focused rental complexes will make you think twice. To combat the housing crunch in many cities across the United States, urban planners have had no choice but to build tiny, like itty bitty bitty bitty, tiny, 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 small, right? To optimize their profit margins, developers must squeeze as many apartments under one roof as possible and micro units, that's what they're starting to call them, micro units as small as 300 square feet. That's like a freaking closet. I mean, are you kidding me? But 300 square feet are not uncommon in parts of Los Angeles, New York City, and Boston. Sorry, you're next. And a lot of the large cities out there, eh, it's coming to you a development near you soon okay so you want to talk about that because when you start looking at that previously whenever you looked at normal apartments and normal rentals they would at least try to make you feel a little bit better about renting and they'd give you a sense of luxury and a sense of a community feel they'd have chefs on site they'd have group fitness classes spa access maybe a fitness facility in the apartment complex that you were or you're renting from right but not so much with these tight quarters. They're taking all of that away because they want to make more money. And what's scary here is that a lot of millennials that would be home buyers are starting to consider renting instead of buying. And I care too much about you not to be honest with you. That's a big, big mistake. And it's one that if you go that route, unfortunately, you're going to live to regret it when you see that the market doesn't explode here in a few years like it did in 2008. 2008 was an anomaly. It's not something that happens often. It was the first time market really exploded since the Great Depression of the early 1900s going into the mid 1900s, 1920s, 1930s, right? So you gotta really think about that. You gotta be honest with yourself. Are the prices so cool? Are they awesome no but are you going to be able to build yourself up and get yourself into a better position by making the prudent steps yes absolutely now the third thing that's interesting is real estate marketers hello are finally getting to you getting you they're posting more stuff on facebook your instagram feed your snapchat by the way if you're a savvy snapchatter hit me up i would love to talk to you because i can't figure the damn thing out just being honest with you i got facebook down you know obviously youtube do this all the time but uh snapchatting uh, a little bit foreign to me maybe i need a generation z maybe millennial i don't know hook it up let me know hit me up Love to hear from you about that. Just a side note. So whenever we talk about that, we're seeing a lot more real estate marketers approaching your social feed, your Instagram, your Pinterest, your whatever, right? Now, obviously I'm making these YouTube videos. I know there's a couple of other really good agents across the nation that are as committed as I am to providing great content for you to help you make sense of the real estate process. That being said, three out of 1.2 million real estate agents is not a lot, but I'm glad that you tuned in and thank you for being here because I'm going to continue making these videos into perpetuity to make sure that you're getting relevant information Information, insightful information to help you make a well-informed decision and make sense of the real estate process. So be careful what marketing that you see out there. Just know that real estate marketers are looking at it. My biggest thing is YouTube because, hey, it's an informational platform. It gives me an opportunity to share with you. And now I'm going live every Wednesday. So make sure that you tune in at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The fourth thing that we're seeing a lot of are low down payment programs marching into the rescue. Now, this is really cool because over half of home buyers put down less than 20%. A lot of, I still get the question a lot. They say, Andrew, how much do I have to have from a down payment. I don't have the 20% yet. Can I buy a home? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of different loan programs out there. These days you can get a conventional loan with a, as low as a 3% down payment. FHA is very standard at about 3.5%. Those are the traditional models, but they also have these other things called down payment assistance and home is possible programs that can actually give you money to help you buy a home. Now, just a full disclaimer here, when you consider that option, talk to a mortgage loan officer and ask them about what kind of hooks might be on the backside of that bad boy, because normally the trade-off of a down payment assistance or home as possible program is a higher interest rate that's how they fund the program but at the same time 
If you really start looking at the numbers, ask the loan officer or your trusted real estate advisor where you are to help you work those numbers. And you really look at the cost benefit of renting and the cost benefit of buying even with a slightly higher interest rate, you're probably gonna be leaning on the side of buying a home. Just being real with you if you're making a logical decision there. But just know that there's a lot of opportunities out there. There's even some 0% down options with no private mortgage insurance being offered from certain lenders. That's kind of a rare program at the same time. There are different loan programs that lenders are trying to make available to you as a first time home buyer to assist you with purchasing your first home. So you're doing your part today by watching this episode and I really appreciate that because it's gonna set you up for success. Now watch other videos I've made about the home buying process and you'll be ready to go and you'll make every move and every decision well informed and you'll have peace, comfort and confidence every step of the way. And that's what we want you to have as a first time home buyer. So it's something that you wanna think about, it's something when you wanna know about and it's something that you definitely wanna keep in the back of your brain to go ask a loan officer and trusted real estate advisor to Day, okay the fifth thing generation z is coming up in the ranks generation z is right behind you now what makes generation z so interesting and you might be saying who the heck are generation z right now these folks have like never known the world without the internet whereas my generation generation x well heck we uh didn't even have cell phones until we were like in high school and back then it was like hello it looked like a brick it was wired into a big battery i mean it was kind of crazy computers were just starting to come online and we were like oh okay this is pretty cool stuff but we don't know what to do with it right <laughs> whereas a millennial always knew what to do with it and generation z is i mean it's like in their brain they they can write the code and they're three years old and they get it right anyways so that being said generation z is born between 1995 and 2010 and i want to share with this share this with you because i find it very interesting with the demographic audience that watch the videos like you today so the biggest demographic is no surprise to me are millennials they comprise over 41 percent of the average viewers of my channel which is really awesome thank you millennials great big shout out to you for that and continue learning growing sharing the videos out right do what you do as a millennial help other people by sharing this content please now the second biggest demographic is my age bracket, which is gonna be not the millennials. So if we say millennials go up to 35, 36 this year, then obviously 37 up to like, you know, 47, 50. I'm getting old, I guess. Yeah, anyways. So my generation, right, old people, is the next biggest demographic on my channel. But here's why Generation Z is so interesting. Generation Z comprises almost 8% of the viewership of my channel, and this is fascinating to me. And here's why. The average age of the first time home buyer for this year is 33 years old. The average age of the person that gets married, if you're a male, is 29, and as a woman, is 27. So it's really fascinating if you look at these numbers. You might be like, oh yeah, you said you're a real estate geek, you're getting a bit geeky on me. Well, maybe, but it's fascinating. It's very fascinating. So if the average age of a first time home buyer is 33 and we have Generation Z being born between 1995 and 2010, yet they account for about 8% of the viewership of this channel. Hmm. I love you already, Generation Z, and I love my millennials. I love everybody that watches the channels, but I'm really, really fascinated about that because here's what I think is gonna happen. I think what you're gonna see is Generation Z educating themselves even more so than the millennials have. And millennials, you do a great job from the millennials, millennials I work with here in Vegas. Oh my God, I love them. They're so smart. You know, they ask great questions. They've watched the channel and they appreciate the videos and they're just really wonderful, in my opinion, to work with because they're ready to listen and to learn and to grow and to make the right steps going forward by and large for the ones that I've worked with here in Vegas at least. Generation Z, if they're, if right now they're viewing 8% or 8% of them are the viewers of my channel and they're not fitting that mold just yet, if there is, is such a thing, of the average first time, the age of the average first time home buyer, what makes that fascinating to me is that we're talking about people that are like 18 to 24 on maybe the older side of the Generation Z spectrum, right? Yet they may not be buying a home until I don't know when. It's gonna be interesting to see what average age of first time home buyers for Generation Z is. But what makes it really interesting is if it turns out to be like 30 to 33 and they're starting as early as 18 to 24 watching this channel about making sense of the real estate process, they're going to be a very educated and savvy home buyer. And they're going to be more likely to want to buy a home because in recent polling of Generation Z, over half of them said they'd prefer to own them rent. When you have majority going back to point two of today's episode, you have them. You have a large percentage of millennial home buyers consider renting instead of buying, which again is going to be a big mistake. Something to think about. Don't miss the boat on this one. Stay tuned and let's see where the market continues to grow and shift and learn together. Now, of course, next January I'll be putting out a, a housing market prediction for 2019. After I sit back and do what I do best with being extremely geeky and consuming all kinds of economic data and trends and reports, and then put it in an easy to understand 
understand and digest video for you. So here's what I'd like you to do. Tell me what you're thinking about this episode in the comment section below, along with what you're experiencing as a first time home buyer or what you believe first time home buyers are faced with in today's market that's impacting them as far as housing trends are concerned. Tell us about it in the comment section below. Engage with this video. Love you long time for that. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop up my contact information. If you want to drop me a line to say hello, or if you simply want to get help finding a top agent where you live, please let me know. Contact info is on the screen down below. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Number one, please subscribe to this channel. Number two, please like this video. Number three, please share this video around with someone you know is going to be able to help because just like you, I'm sure that you know of another millennial, Generation Z, first time home buyer that could really benefit from today's video. Please share it with them. Thank you so much. Now, go ahead and check out these other videos I'm popping up. These videos are being popped up to help you get started with the home buying process and help you make sense with the home buying process. And of course, between now and next time, I'm wishing you and yours a lifetime full of love, wealth, abundance and happiness. Thank you for watching today team and enjoy an amazing day.